Hi everybody, um, for today's art session I will be painting in one of these little birds and I think I'm going to do the one in the middle. So I'll just cut that out so that I don't get paint over the other ones. So this is part of my digital sheets that I have available in my shop and I printed that out to a 200 gram paper, archival paper. And I am now just thinking of the colours I'm going to use in this. I decided not to use um, collage on this one and just to paint it in. So I haven't really done any of these birds for a while. So um, we'll see what, what we create out of this. So I'm just putting some gesso down to seal the paper a little bit so that the paint doesn't just you know get absorbed too much into the paper and uh, so this is black acrylic and I'm just getting I'm just starting um, with the eyes sometimes I do this so that I can get a feel for the character um, through working on the eyes so and also technique wise is to, just to get some areas down that I know I'll need to come and work on um, in more detail and to get that paint to dry. So I've got a collection of paints that I'm using and um, this is an orange acrylic. So I'm just mixing it in and you can see it's kind of mixing a little bit with the black on the eye there. But I never mind colors mixing because it kind of carries the whole character across the whole thing so I mean you can have paintings where you, you want to be very specific and you can either use your embossing um, heat gun to dry it in between um, or you can kind of do a layer and leave it um, till it dries before you put in another layer so I've also been actually using the acrylic uh, retarder which helps to keep the acrylic as um, moist as possible for you to add another layer of paint and maybe blend it in but um, so that's been helping to keep the acrylic dry for a little bit I mean moist for a little bit longer so yeah I've been trying to cut down the colors I use so I do have a selection of colors just out of shot that I'm using and I just want to stick with those colors and make it work. <laughs> Everything's a learning process. I love watching these videos back and seeing um, what it is that I did while I was painting because I'm kind of assessing my own myself as well and um, I'm starting to see I, I have a thought process um, or um, yeah a process and a way that I do things. So the more and more I'm doing them then I'm actually understanding my my own thought process a lot more and what it is that I like and what I don't like and what worked and what didn't work so it's, it's quite good to film yourself if you can while you're painting then you can reassess so this cute little owl um, could be in any color really a lot of different colors you could do greens um, you can stick with blues uh, I always kind of like a lot of the time to do warm, warm, cuddly, fuzzy colors. But yeah, you could use different things and you can come back on this and you can, you could still kind of use collages. I mean, I've got the blues in the corner there, the painted papers. I wasn't sure if I would use anything on it. So I just had them on standby in case I was going to use those papers. I'm trying to scratch into it, I'm trying to do different things. So I really also like the texture or the uh, of the paint because while I'm doing it, I sometimes use my scraper to kind of um, scrape the paint and flatten everything. But other times I'll kind of leave the the little bits of gesso that kind of stick out. Um, in the kind of textured shape. 
as I'm going along and I'm, I'm assessing if I like something, if I don't, um, and then I'm also always thinking, right, what part do I want to work on next? So this is me using the scraper. So I'm thinking I want to kind of blend some of the colors together and cross some, yeah, cross some colors over to other parts of the bird. So I'm just going over with my biro pen, an ordinary writing ink pen. I use this a lot. Um, that part of the paint is still wet, so. I know I've heard of people saying they use Sharpies and you can use a Posca pen. Um, you can use Fabio Castell pens. When they're drier, you could add all that to it as well. So there's so many things you could do really with this. You could start in watercolor and then you could add different layers of different um, mediums as well over it. I mean, if I was doing this on um, a canvas, after adding acrylic and doing all this, I could then use oils on it as well, which is really where I want to go with things. It's kind of building a first layer of acrylic and taking it as far as I, I, I like. And then with that now, kind of polishing it off with oil paint. So I will get there at some point. But right now, it's just enjoying the process. And then, um, and each time I'm doing that, it's bringing out something else. And ideas for me. So I was just showing the brush there with the paint and the, the way that the brush bristles were. So I'm kind of using that as a design on the owl's neck and showing the different ways you can use the brush. So to get different patterns that I can use those parts later on for um, collaging as well. So once I cut around this shape, because as I was saying in the other videos with the foxes, this is, um, kind of like paper dolls for me so it was about painting them and then cutting them out and you can reuse them in different things on greeting cards or on paintings or just have them as a little character that you can you can carry about with you and do whatever you want really but little cute paintings that actually have a shape <laughs> So and I'm finding it really interesting where I've got blue paint on my brush and when I add it to the yellow it shows the transparency because it actually does make it green. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about this. Uh, this year is supposed to be a painting year for me so I'm doing a lot more painting than I I usually do. I've been quite focused on my digital work which I love and which has helped me become comfortable with my use of color. Because I think I had a fear of using um, paints and thinking I would waste the paint. So I became quite restricted in my use of paint or even wanting to buy it because it's so expensive. And if you buy it and you waste it, I, was, I wasn't happy with that idea. But I've always been interested in digital um, art anyway, so... Being able to freely use color without feeling like I was wasting paint really helped me to get comfortable with what colors I like together, how to use them, what to enhance, how to make my characters look. And so now with the painting that I'm doing now with the physical acrylic paints or watercolor or, or oil paint, I feel more confident in and my color use. I'm just putting the eyes down. Look how it changes straight away as soon as you put the reflection in the eye. It's like the little character just comes alive. So these whites I'm just putting to kind of show reflection. It's so cute. It looks ready to say something to us really, this owl. So I like using the back of the brush to put that kind of thick textured scrape in 
onto different areas. I mean, that's one thing when you're doing digital work and you have the different brushes and they give you different effects. I'm trying to currently work out how to do that similar idea with my actual paintings and I'm trying to scrape with different things and trying to see what it looks like and not being afraid to do it as well because you can paint over things. So I love that, it looks really cute. So you can see what I've done with the digital uh, printout. It's just building the layers and the more and more we do this then we just get better at it. That's what I have in mind to keep practicing and practicing and then I won't even realize that there's a style in there or that I'm improving probably till I look back. But yeah, this is really cute. I really love it and um A lot of fun. It's very easy to do. So I'll have those on my shop and as well as other ones and I mean it's oh it's obviously easy enough to, to do your own sketch and just to paint it. Um but the digital sheets is um the idea is of first of all it's quite stylized but also if you wanted to just print it out and print it out and try different colours and things um, it's quite easy to do that as well. Um, and once this is coloured, there's so many ways that you can use it. You can get um, like maybe a colour photocopy and you can maybe adjust the size and you can use it for tags or for greeting cards or paintings or um, yeah, and put a lot of different things on it, actually. But I love it. It's so cute. Get the colours and the texture closer up. It just looks so yummy. And as always, trying to cut it out while it's not dry. Not the best idea. And as I said, you can always do it in... Um, greens or blues or reds, different hues um, or yellows only, uh, different shades of yellows but I always like the rosy cheeks that always brings things out. So yeah that's all I'm gonna do with that I think and then just to show an example I'll just open up a canvas here and um, just show you how you can place it on a canvas. I mean, on the background, you could maybe have just plain white, or you could have, you could put on tissue paper, you could glue tissue paper on, like one color, or you could create a background. And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be to the side as well. It could be on a tree branch. And this is like the similar to the fox, so you can do the same as well, just place it in the background. Um, place it on the on the canvas or um, create a background for that as well. I like it on the white actually. It's quite nice. Um, so just doing landscape because this is a bit longer. So yeah, those are the different ideas that um, you can do. You could do more than one on it. So it doesn't have to be just one. So thank you for watching. Um, me create this little owl character and I'll speak to you soon and please subscribe for more videos and more um, updates.